This video is best viewed on a full screen at 1080p quality. Click the gear at the lower right corner of the video window. Next, click the quality option. And finally, select 1080p. Okay guys, before we get started, I just want to do a quick two minute explanation of the method I'm going to use to compare projectors for you. Uh, I do not do what most people do, which is to play a movie clip and record the screen with a video camera. And the reason for this is because video cameras automatically adjust for brightness and other things to present the best image possible. So here we have some uh, image of some colored smoke. It's being projected from our $100 off-brand budget projector. The image doesn't look too bad, and again, that's because our video camera is automatically making adjustments for brightness and other things. Uh, now watch that image on the left as I uncover the brighter name brand projector on the right side. Do you see how the image on the left changes brightness depending on the brightness in the room? And that is the reason that I'm not going to videotape the projected images. Instead, I'm going to take still pictures of the projected images uh, side by side without any automated adjustments. Uh, this will give you a much more accurate representation of each projector I'm reviewing for you. I'm projecting all of the images in a dimly lit room rather than a dark room. For this, I'm using two shaded lamps placed about 12 feet diagonally from the center of the screen, and each lamp has a small 15 watt chandelier bulb in it. The ambient light in the room measures 4 lumen at the center of the screen. So the two most important factors in your home theater are obviously the projector and the screen, and that's why I want to quickly mention the type of screen I'm projecting onto. In this case, it's a spandex projector screen instead of the more typical blackout material. There are several advantages to this type of screen, uh, one of which it can attach to a $30 backdrop stand. Uh, it's easy to do. You just take some five spring clips and you attach the screen to the backdrop stand. And this can be used outdoors in your backyard or take it with you camping or to a party. And the screen I have here is made in the USA by Stretch Screen USA. It's available on Amazon for around $80, which is actually less than a do-it-yourself uh, fixed frame type screen. Uh, you don't have to buy wood, corner brackets, staples, and actually build the frame as you do with that type of frame. The other advantage uh, is that you don't need a permanent empty wall space. For example, the situation I have here is a little awkward to put up a fixed frame screen because I have a staircase in the way. But with the spandex projector screen, that's not a problem. It literally only takes 30 seconds to put up this screen. Right here, we're all halfway done already. It just simply attaches to five small hooks that are uh, in the ceiling, and you can barely see them. And the corner brackets, the, the bottom corners, attach with a bungee to something as simple as a water jug or whatever you want to uh, use for that. And there you have it. The screen is completely up. Now just compare that to a pull-down screen, which are big, heavy, you typically need two people to move these things around, and you're not going to throw it in your car and take it somewhere, or even move it from room to room. Uh, with the spandex screen, look at how easy this is to take down. Not a problem. And there you go. If you have five hooks in the other room, another 30 seconds and you got it up. So here you can see the spandex projector screen produces a really good image, but that's only half the story. Check this out. If we pick up our camera and walk around behind the screen, you can see that the spandex projector screen can also act as a backlight screen. That's like getting two screens in one. No other type of projector screen can do this. Now, one of the biggest advantages of uh, rear projection is that you can walk in front of the screen without blocking the projected image. This really comes in handy if you're doing like an outdoor movie with a bunch of kids because they can run around in front of the screen without ca casting shadows on the screen because the projector is actually behind the screen. Now, buyer beware, you may be tempted to go with a cheaper knockoff version from China, but Go with the one made in the USA. It's Amazon's choice, even at a higher price, and it has 147 reviews so far. 
So here's the Amazon product page of the spandex projector screen that I have, and they have images along the left. As you can see, the it's a much cleaner design instead of sewn crooked and all that. And the fabric is a much higher quality. It's a tighter weave, which will give you better colors and a sharper image. And here is a real-world example of that. I have the two screens hung side by side with the Made in the USA one on the left and the Chinese knockoff version on the right. And you can really see the difference in the color quality, the brightness, the saturation. And if you look at this next image here, you can actually see how much detail you lose in the smoke due to the uh, looser weave of the cheaper fabric. And in the final example here, just take a look at the stars in the sky. You can see you are almost non-existent in the cheaper fabric of the Chinese knockoff version. So get the Made in the USA screen. If you spent money on a projector, you're going to want a good screen. Here's the product page one more time, and I put a link in the description to make it easy for you. All right, let's get going. Compare our projectors. So here you can see a size comparison between the two projectors we're showing you today. And here's a white image showing the Nebula capsules rated at 100 lumens with the DB Power rated at 1800 lumens. And as you can see, the um, lumen ratings are not always completely accurate. If we zoom in on this, you can get a kind of a better idea of what the pixelation of each screen looks. The Nebula capsule is a little bit uh, less pixelated. Here's our first image uh, to show some color saturation differences. The Nebula capsule looks to be a little bit better saturated than the DB Power. And here is the lumen brightness. You can pause any of these slides, the video, at any time to, uh, to look at them longer. You'll see uh, they're fairly comparable for brightness. And let's quickly do a brightness comparison with a true 2000 lumen BenQ projector. And here you see a good example how the 2000 lumen name brand projector is a lot brighter than the claimed 1800 lumens of the DB Power T20 projector. Moving back to the T20 comparison, you'll see here that even though they have similar resolutions, the Nebula capsule has a little bit less pixelation than the T20 projector. And with this next image, we'll test the transition between colors. If you look at the right image, the DB Power T20 projector has a line kind of going through the blue colors, and the other Nebula capsule is much smoother. This image will also help you see the difference in transition between colors. The DB Power T20 uh, down in the blues and yellows and greens uh, kind of cuts off at some point, where it's much smoother once again in the Nebula capsule image. However, when you compare this image side by side, you don't notice those uh, harsh transitions between colors as much, but the Nebula capsule still uh, gives you a little bit more detail in some of the areas. And our next image here, zoomed in, you'll see the Nebula capsule has a little bit smoother image, less pixelation than the uh, much cheaper DB Power T20. Here's a similar image except on a black background instead of a white background. And the images are quite similar in brightness, you'll notice, and uh, you still get a little bit more detail in the blues and the greens and yellows. Here's a zoomed in image. And you'll notice the Nebula capsule has a much better uh, color representation in the purple colors. Here we have a 24 level grayscale image. And as you can see, the DB Power T20 uh, loses some of the uh, details in the lighter colors, the 1, 2, 3 kind of blend together there. And here's a close up. A little more blue tone to the uh, T20 projector. Here's a good one that shows shadows and highlights. Uh, you'll see that um, you can see a little bit better shadows and highlights in the Nebula capsule. Not too drastic, but uh, just gives a better overall representation of the gray colors. Here's a close-up image, and uh, it's a little bit sharper, too, in the uh, Nebula capsule. Here's a low-contrast image basically showing uh, highlighted areas. And if you notice up above the stairs in the upper left-hand corner, the DB Power T20 kind of loses the uh, gradation between the uh, walls there. Here's a good uh, low-contrast image of darker colors. 
and we will see that the nebula capsule has a little bit better uh, shadow detail. We can zoom in on this image and uh, I, I flip the images so that uh, you get the same section of each photo. That's why the faces are facing each other. Here's a great image to demonstrate both the shadows and the highlight areas. You'll notice on the image on the right, the DB Power T20, the back of the dog almost disappears into the background of the image. So the nebula is definitely better in the highlight details. This is just a basic uh, cross-section pattern. Um, you can see nebula capsules a little bit sharper, a little better detail overall. And if we zoom in on this image, uh, you can see the differences here. Now we'll do a uh, different grid pattern on our next image here. And these are pretty basic, just kind of to show the uh, detail and the resolution of each, each projector. And we can zoom in. And you see the nebula capsule definitely is sharper. Uh, and even the dots are appear a little bit brighter. This one's pretty self-explanatory as well. These are just basically resolution tests. And um, not very drastic differences, but uh, noticeable nonetheless. And when we zoom in, we'll see a little bit better how the nebula capsule does produce a sharper grid pattern. And even lines, even. The DB Tout Power T20 isn't quite even. And here is a basic same picture except white on a black background. So you pretty much get these same, um, same results here with the nebula capsule being sharper. Next we'll do a text sample. And in, in this one, this, you can really tell that the nebula capsule stands out uh, with much better text. And when we zoom in, again, I, I take the images and reverse them. That's why the text is backwards on the left. But uh, you can see it's much easier to read on the nebula capsule than the cheaper T20 projector. Here's faces, basically to test uh, flesh tones. And you do have a little bit better saturation in the nebula capsule. A little bit truer to life uh, flesh tones in that one. They're a little bit more washed out on the T20. And zoomed in, you get a little more pink colors on the T20 with the nebula capsule looking uh, better for the flesh tones. And here's a, another flesh tone image. And once again, we'll pretty much see the same results where you get a little bit better flesh tones on the nebula capsule. The DB, DB Power T20, the, the faces almost look white in the top row without much skin tones. And next we'll do a good uh, color contrast image here, kind of to show the details in different colors. Uh, you'll see the right side in, in that front pile of... Uh, powder there, you really lose a lot of contrast and detail compared to the nebula capsule. If we zoom in, we can also see the purples are much stronger in the uh, nebula capsule. And even the greens are quite a bit different. Here's one more example, similar to the last one, just to test the different contrasts. If you see the red, the, the, some of the contrast kind of disappears, and the yellows are much brighter in the nebula capsule. Here's a low contrast image, kind of a foggy image, um, and as we can see, not drastically different, but once again, I think the nebula capsule has a little bit more better uh, overall color tone. Here another color image, and as we see, the yellows are a little darker in the T20, but uh, you lose some detail in the on top of the beak there in the red areas. Here's a night image, high contrast image with a dark sky compared to the lit structure. And you can see the moon, uh, the clouds around the moon. You get a little bit better detail in the nebula capsule in the sky area. And a zoomed in image shows a little bit more of the pixelation in the cheaper DB Power T20, T20 projector. <clears throat> 
Here's a good uh, color image with bright lights. And in the smoky areas, the nebula capsule again shows a little better detail in both the highlights and the shadow areas. Zoomed in, you can see the yellow around the light. You have a little bit more uh, detail. Here's another high contrast image. And not too drastically different, but a little bit sharper in the nebula capsule. And when we zoom in, you'll see that a little better. This image, uh, you'll want to look for the shadow details along the right side on the pillars there. And you can see both of them are do an okay job, but um, not too drastic of a difference. If we zoom in, you can see how the lighting is a little bit different and the detail of the pyramid in the background there. Here you'll want to check for the shadow details on the lower part of the picture where the, the wave is. Both of them are fairly similar and nothing too drastic. And here's another nighttime image. Here's the comparison between the two. Get a little bit more yellow cast in the nebula capsule for some reason. And zooming in. Here's a good, another good uh, shadow um, picture. Uh, the background you can see in the nebula capsule, you get you pick up a little bit more shadow details. It's brighter, especially the yellow building you can see in the DB Power T20. It's uh, quite a bit darker in the background there. Next we have an image. This is another one which shows shadows and highlights. A good way to do test images. And we can zoom in on that one. And here we have a hot air balloon. You see the greens in the nebula capsule are uh, quite a bit more prominent than in the DB Power T20, the green squares in the balloon. And a firework photo, very high contrast. Once again, the purples are much better in the nebula capsule and the greens as well. And zooming in on that one. And our final image for comparison is a nice night sky. Uh, you can see the stars much better, I think, in the nebula capsule as opposed to the DB Power T20. And zooming in on that, uh, here's a good example. It's uh, quite a bit sharper in the nebula capsule. So there you have it. I believe the nebula capsule is a better image than the DB Power T20. Just for comparisons, I will now compare the better projector, the nebula capsule, to a name brand BenQ, kind of a full-size, very high-quality projector. You can see how much brighter the BenQ is than the nebula capsule here. Uh, but you're comparing 100 lumen to 2,000 lumen. And if we zoom in, you can also see the difference in detail with the Nebula capsule, a much lower resolution, the BenQ a full 1080p. Here is the color contrast. And the you can pause this slide to compare the uh, brightness of each square here. And hands down, the BenQ is much brighter. Zoomed in, BenQ gives you a much smoother image, and that's to be expected due to the much higher resolution. Here's the color gradient. The blues are actually a little better in the nebula capsule, um, just not quite as bright. And the greens are a little smoother in the BenQ 1070, smoother transition. Here's a smoke image. Both give decent detail. The BenQ, the brighter projector is better for a brighter room, 
Uh, the Nebula capsule will give you a very good image in a dark room, no doubt about it. More detail in the BenQ, obviously, here. And similar image. Smoke on a dark background. Zooming in. There we go. Much more detail in the higher resolution. It is it is worth getting a, a higher resolution if you want to do like a 10-foot picture. Here's the grayscales. BenQ has a much better uh, gradation between each uh, contrast there. And you'll see how much sharper the text is also on the BenQ. That's basically just due to the higher resolution. Here you can really see the difference in the shadow details of her hair, especially near the back of her head, that the uh, BenQ does a much better job. And here just uh, a highlight example. You can compare the two. And once again, the, the highlights and the shadows in the BenQ are much better than the Nebula capsule. Here is our image, and we'll want to watch the back of the dog again. Um, they're both pretty good. Uh, you get a lot better shadow detail in the BenQ. Here's kind of a resolution test. Much duller image in the Nebula capsule. And you can see how much thicker the lines appear in the BenQ projector. They kind of fade away in the Nebula capsule. Here is another image. See the dots in the middle of each square. The Nebula capsule, you don't see them as much. The BenQ, they are fairly prominent, as we can see here. And even the lines, the thinner lines in the middle of the squares there, much better on the BenQ projector. Here's another resolution example. We can zoom in on those. You can really see here how much sharper the higher resolution, the 1080p of the BenQ, uh, the Nebula capsule appears a little soft. Same image, just uh, reversed with the light on the, on the dark background. Here's a text image, and just due to the higher resolution, the BenQ is obviously going to produce much better text, much more readable. Uh, zooming in, you can see how the pixels show up in the Nebula capsule, and the BenQ is very legible. Here's some skin tones. Uh, just because it's brighter, the, the faces appear much better on the uh, BenQ projector. Zooming in, very good skin tones. You can see the faces. Uh, the darker image of the Nebula capsule, you really don't see the details of the faces as much. And this is a good example too, with much more detail in the higher resolution, brighter name brand projector. Another similar image to the last one, basically to show the uh, detail in the different colors of each projector. If you notice the background, how much more detail you pick up in the BenQ projector than the Nebula. And in the sky here as well, you see much more of the clouds around the moon in the BenQ projector. 
Here zooming in, good resolution test, uh, Nebula capsule, you can see the pixels and the BenQ, you don't really see those as much. Here's another good example of how much brighter the uh, background of the image is. This is good contrast image with darks and lights. Pick up much more detail, I think, in the BenQ image, as we can see here. The resolution of the two are obviously different. And here, the shadows and the pillars on the right side, you really notice a difference, and up in the ceiling area there. Here, zooming in, if you notice the detail in the pyramid, they're uh, much crisper in the higher resolution BenQ projector. And here is a good one with the shadow details again, as well as the sky. A night photo. You can see the blues in the sky much better in the BenQ projector than the Nebula capsule as this shows here, much better blues on the right side. And here you can really see the difference in the background. If you look at the left side of the picture on the Nebula capsule, the background is very dark compared to the BenQ. Zooming in, you can really see the difference here, how much more detail you pick up. And another shadow highlight. If you look on the side of the train here in the green areas, you see a lot more detail in the darker areas on the BenQ projector. And the fireworks shot. And the night sky. This will be a good test of the stars, the little details that show up. And we'll zoom in on that one to see the difference. Stars much more prominent in the full-size BenQ projector compared to the Nebula Pico projector. So, as we can see, the Nebula capsule does have a better image quality than the DB Power T20, but it is three to four times the price, so that's to be expected. But when we compare it to a full-size 1080p name brand projector, the uh, BenQ W1070 really shines and produces an even better image. So in conclusion, just remember all of these images were projected in a dimly lit room, not a dark room, onto the Spandex projector screen, which you can see the link down in the description. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Bye-bye.